Hello fellow pageant lovers, I'm the pageant nerd and thank you for checking out my latest video. As I said recently, I'm going to do something a little different for my next few clips, and that is to respond to some of the many amazing video suggestions that you, my wonderful viewers, have left me over the last couple of years. I've managed to sneak in the odd facts and figure into some of my larger video clips, but I haven't dedicated entire videos to your suggestions, and so I thought it was the perfect time, now that we're in the off-season for the Alpha Pageants, to get to some of your questions. The first video in this series was suggested by Elias Castillo from Venezuela, and he wanted me to discuss the Miss Venezuela organization and whether they're at a crossroads of sorts, given their recent results at Miss World and Miss Universe. Now, as you know, I'm a huge pageant lover from the 80s and the 90s and obviously more recently and so a lot of my videos have covered the incredible results that Venezuela has achieved over the past several decades. With seven Miss Universes and six Miss Worlds, Venezuela is in the top two of countries in terms of titles won and they've placed 45 times at Miss Universe and 35 at Miss World. As I've covered recently, Venezuela owns the second longest placement streak of all time at Miss Universe, with 21, but they have the longest top 10, top 6 and top 5 placement streaks, and they're one of three countries to have placed in the top 2 for three consecutive years. Venezuela was at its absolute peak at Miss World and Miss Universe in the 1980s and 90s, and unfortunately they haven't featured as prominently in both pageants in recent years, being eclipsed by the likes of Colombia, the Philippines, and South Africa, and to a lesser extent, France, Thailand, Mexico, Brazil, and Indonesia, if not in terms of titles won, but in terms of placement consistency. For a country that's used to winning the alpha titles on a semi-regular basis, Venezuela's fortunes at Miss World and Miss Universe have plummeted in recent years. Their most recent Miss World crown by Ivian Sarkos in 2011 was followed by five non-placements and then four placements in either the top 30 or top 40. They've won just one Miss World crown in the past quarter century, having picked up four crowns in a 15-year stretch in the 80s and 90s. As I've mentioned in other videos, the Miss World organization isn't fond of second place contestants from national pageants being sent to Miss World while the top queen goes to Miss Universe. Having said that, Ivian Sarkos placed second to Vanessa Goncalves at Miss Venezuela 2010 before going on to win Miss World. But when Gabriela Ferrari, who placed second to Irene Esser at Miss Venezuela 2011, went unplaced at Miss World 2012, the Miss Venezuela organization started to select their Miss World delegate in a separate pageant. It didn't, however, change their fortunes as they continued to go unplaced, and even in more recent years, they've only made the first cut. Having achieved an as yet unmatched back-to-back -back in 2008 and 2009, Gabriela Isler is Venezuela's most recent Miss Universe from 2013. And their fortunes are slightly better than at Miss World, with another top five and a top three result since then. But the new national directors of Miss Venezuela have yet to achieve a top 10 at either Miss World or Miss Universe since taking over in 2018. Gabriela Isler, along with Nina Cecilia and Jacqueline Aguilera, also winners of major international crowns, took over from Osmel Sosa, who was the mastermind behind Miss Venezuela since the 1980s and who led his country to dozens of international crowns. His focus was on creating the complete package beauty queen. Everything from catwalk to Q&A, wardrobe, makeup, and of course aesthetics, which led many contestants, in fact most contestants, undergoing plastic surgery, often before and after Miss Venezuela, before they competed in the international pageant. Even here in Australia, I've seen a number of news stories and documentaries made about Osmel, featuring his almost scientific approach to beauty, somewhat uncomfortably overseen by a group of men critiquing every inch of a beauty contestant's physique. 
Former queens also spoke candidly about their pageant experiences, including Miss Universe 1996, Alicia Machado. They say no. The Miss Universe company, they say no. Never I, I take uh, girls with plastic surgeries. It's not true. And the late Ava Ekval, top five at Miss Universe 2001. What about Ava Ekval? I got surgery. <laughs> what did you have? Uh, my, my breasts and my nose. They all had the exact same nose. There's a particular Miss Venezuela nose. Yeah, and I thought it was ridiculous. When I won, they wanted to change my nose <laughs> again, and I said no. Support for such practices would no longer be considered acceptable, especially now with three women in charge of the Miss Venezuela organization. Of course, I'm not privy to the goings on behind the scenes at the Miss Venezuela organization, so I am purely providing my opinion as to why Venezuela is no longer as successful at the alpha pageants and what I interpret as some form of misalignment between what the Venezuelans are producing in terms of their beauty queens and what Miss World and Miss Universe are looking for in their international winners. Both alpha pageants are looking for ambassadors to effectively represent their brands during the year of their reign. As such, they need to be strong spokespeople, ideally fluent in English. They also need to have a platform or an advocacy that they're going to speak strongly about during their reign and also during the competition itself. Some people believe that the Miss Venezuelas of recent years haven't been prepared as well as they could have been heading into their international pageants. Nonetheless, they are still pretty well prepared compared to most other contestants. Having said that, I do struggle to understand on most occasions what they stand for. And this clearly did not matter so much in the past but in the IMG era, when Venezuela has not won a single Miss Universe crown, this clearly does matter. This compared to the Trump era, when Miss Venezuela won four of its Miss Universe crowns. Beauty, for me, is what enters through the eyes, not what we can hear. But you do appreciate the fact that there is an inner beauty to all women as well, yes? For me, a beautiful woman doesn't have to be that smart. Now, as I said, I don't have the understanding of what goes on in Venezuela itself, so I asked Elias to give me his thoughts on what is actually going wrong with the Miss Venezuela organization. Here's what he had to say. Elias gave me some wonderfully detailed answers which are too lengthy to publish in this video, so I'm going to give you some of the main points here and add them in full in the video description. My main question was, what do you think are the main reasons why the Miss Venezuela organization isn't as successful now as it was under Osmal Sosa? Elias answered, Osma looks for a woman who generates a great visual impact with a good attitude, good physical condition, intelligent, and of course she's a beautiful woman, then works with that girl and gives her the tools she needs to compete in a beauty pageant. A clear example of this was when Vorushka Ramirez went to run for Miss Venezuela 1997. She appeared before Osmel, being a girl abandoned by her parents, poor, very thin, with little oratory skills because she came from a rural area. He accepted her because he saw that she was a beautiful girl with potential. They provided her with the necessary tools to compete and against all odds won Miss Venezuela 1997 and the following year she was first runner-up in Miss Universe 1998. The new organization wanted to break with Osmel's formula. Instead they focused on women with internal beauty and once they won they did not equip them with the tools they needed to compete. The new organization was left without experts in the preparation of its queens. Without Osmel's work team, they have tried to rebuild it. But it is very difficult because Osmel's experience and talent is difficult to replicate. At first, there were high expectations of the new organization since it would be directed by three former beauty queens who were also formed by Osmel. But they have shown otherwise. 
Despite knowing the methodology to form a queen, they continue to make mistakes by not preparing them well to compete. 2019, 2020, 2021, these have been Venezuela's worst years in Miss Universe. For the first time in 46 years, Venezuela for three consecutive years was excluded from the top 10. I also asked, how do you like Amanda Duramel's chances at Miss Universe 2022? Elias answered, Amanda is very intelligent, with very good oratory. She is fluent in English. In addition, her personality is that of a very quiet girl. She transmits peace. She still must improve in some areas, such as styling and wardrobe. To improve those last two aspects, she could be placed in the top five. We know that it depends on the Miss Venezuela organization to fine tune those last details. Thanks Elias for those wonderful insights, as well as the video suggestion in the first place. And to everyone, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and ring the bell if you haven't already. Thanks for your great ongoing support, it truly means a lot to me. I'll be back soon with my next video in this series, but in the meantime, it's goodbye from me, the Pageant Nerd.